Hello and welcome back to Pursuit of Passion where I share with you recipes, tips and techniques to give you the tools to cook memorable meals for you and your loved ones. In our second studio episode we have today a beautiful wild Alaskan salmon that I will show you how to shallow poach. It's an interesting technique I picked up at Le Bernardin in New York. It allows for a beautiful velvety texture. We'll show you how that goes in a minute. Serving with this gorgeous wild Alaskan salmon, I have lentils that I will be cooking with vegetable stock and tomato juice. The tomato juice will add a unique richness without having to add cream or butter, creating a lighter end product that still delivers on velvety smooth texture and taste. And alongside that, we have a lovely roasted cauliflower that I will be preparing with a basil butter that will roast in the oven, creating beautiful fragrant flavor, adding some richness and come out again, silky smooth and delicious. And the sauce for our salmon dish, we have beautiful creme fraiche, fresh lemons that I will zest and juice and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. It's a lovely light dish that feels more hearty and rich and yet doesn't add too many calories onto your New Year's resolution. Let's cook. So we'll start out with our lentils. We'll take an onion, four cloves of garlic, and begin to chop the onion. I'm going to add some butter to our pan. And we don't want the butter to become too brown. We just want to render our ingredients. Slicing the onion relatively small, almost mimicking the size of the actual lentils. That will create a nice aromatic touch to the finished lentil product without overwhelming it with that allium punch. It's about a quarter cup of chopped onion which will be plenty for our two cups of green lentils. We'll begin sweating those in the butter. And then I'll get to chopping the garlic. First we'll add in a small pinch of kosher salt to help sweat down that onion, bring out some of the moisture and all of its flavor. And with the garlic to help release a lot of its beautiful aromatic qualities, give it a firm smack on the board to crush it gently. And then we can get to mincing it nice and finely. Obviously when you're chopping, be careful to tuck those fingers in and have the knuckle against the blade. Safety first, as I always say. We'll go back and run through it a couple more times just so that it's not too large of chunks that would overwhelm the delicate lentils. And then we can add that to the party. One more layer of seasoning to our lentils. 
And we can stir that around. And allow our aromatics to sweat. And once our aromatics have released a lot of their moisture, we'll add in our green lentils, one cup of vegetable stock, and the tomato juice. So all together, it's about four cups of liquid to our two cups of lentils. We're going to put that on high heat, bring it up to a simmer with another pinch of kosher salt to season it thoroughly and allow that to simmer gently for about 25 to 30 minutes once the lentils are nice and tender. And in order for the lentils to cook efficiently, I'm going to go ahead and put a lid on our pot, allow it to simmer. In the meantime, our beautiful wild Alaskan salmon I'll show you about that technique that I was discussing that I learned back in New York. So we'll put a little bit of butter on the bottom of the pan so that the salmon doesn't stick. Season our salmon thoroughly with kosher salt. I don't like to use pepper on fish. It tends to overpower the delicate flavors. And we don't need too much salt as it is a relatively thin filet. Give that a flip to the other side and season with a little more salt on the other side. And I'm going to place the fish presentation side up and add a little bit of water. Now you don't need too much water. It's not like a, when you're braising a piece of meat and you want to put it halfway up the protein. In this case, you're just simply covering the bottom of the pan and we're going to bring it to a gentle simmer before we place it in a 350 degree oven for about five to seven minutes, depending on your desired doneness. What this method does, it gently cooks through the bottom surface of the salmon that's touching the pan. And then as you go up, the steam gently cooks the other layers of the salmon. It's called unilateral cooking, cooking it on one side essentially to the point where the top part of the salmon will be almost rare to medium rare. The texture is so velvety smooth, it is fantastic and melts like butter. So as I said, we'll just bring that to a gentle simmer. Once it reaches a simmer, we'll pop it in our oven for about five to seven minutes. And now that we have a simmer, we're going to go ahead and place that in our oven. onto our roasted cauliflower. So here I took beautiful fresh basil, blanched it briefly in boiling salted water. The blanching process brings out all of the, the blanching process will give it that vivid green color from the chlorophyll and give it a tender texture that will allow us to puree it with softened plugra butter. As you can see, I've prepared the butter and added a little bit of panko breadcrumb to it to stabilize it. If you want a gluten-free alternative, you can simply omit the breadcrumbs. I just think it adds a bit more texture to the, 
to the party. So to make cooking at home more easy, more accessible, one really, really valuable tool that is not always utilized in home kitchens, gloves. It is great for sanitation, especially when handling things like raw chicken. And honestly, it just facilitates the cleanup afterwards. So I'm going to put on some gloves and we're going to apply this basil butter to the outside of our cauliflower. And as you can see, I've trimmed off most of the root end that would be tough. And to give it a clean before we coat it with the butter, I'm just going to very carefully remove some of these harder outer leaves that would not be pleasant with the finished cooked product. Just use a paring knife to carefully extract all these little pieces of the root that won't become tender when we cook it and be careful not to cut too deep and separate the florets from the head. Roasting it whole like this will allow it to steam thoroughly and create a really nice texture with the finished product. So we removed any unnecessary parts that won't cook nicely and now it's time to coat the cauliflower. The butter you want to be nice and soft and spreadable. And we'll just smear that all over the top and really rub that in to get all the nooks and crannies of the cauliflower. And once this is roasted, those breadcrumbs within it will become golden brown and have a beautiful toasted note to it. And the butter will actually penetrate the pores of our cauliflower creating a beautiful flavor and aroma that will just add to this wonderful preparation. I'm going to get underneath as well. And we can just remove our gloves. For a nice clean feel. And now we're going to roast our cauliflower in a 375 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Place the cauliflower right on top and place it in our oven for 25 to 30 minutes. All right, on to our lemon creme fraiche sauce. This very simple but delicate preparation will add a nice little burst of acidity and carry on the richness of the dish. First we have one cup of creme fraiche. Add that to our mixing bowl. And then we'll take the zest of our lemons, two lemons. The zest has all those beautiful, flavorful, fragrant oils that will release into the sauce. Just very simply using a microplane grater to zest the outside zest from the lemons. Give it a tap to make sure it's all there. All right. And for this proportion of sauce, one cup of creme fraiche will really only need the zest of one lemon. Now we'll grab the juice, simply cut it right in half.
And right here we have a little bit of olive oil. I'm just gonna squeeze the juice right in so that in case any seeds fall through, we can pick them out and not put them in our finished sauce. Now, of course, all ingredients are variable. So depending on the consistency of the creme fraiche that you purchase and the level of juiciness in your lemons, you may need to adjust the amounts that you put in. Now we'll add our olive oil and lemon juice mixture into the sauce, being careful not to allow any seeds to pass through. And begin to whisk it all together. Going to add about a tablespoon of kosher salt and then we'll give it a taste to check the acidity and the flavor. And we'll give it a quick taste. Make sure we're on point with acidity, with flavor. The texture of it looks great. That's about the thinness I was looking for. So it will coat the shallow poached salmon nicely. The flavor is bright, acidic, cool, rich and will be a beautiful counterpart to our salmon. And now, as you can see, the salmon has cooked very quickly. You can check the doneness using something called a cake tester here. It's used a lot in pastry. You could also use it to check the doneness of proteins and you can see it just goes through without too much resistance. That tells you that it is cooked thoroughly, although we can also see that it is beautifully medium rare on the outside. The texture, as I said, will be velvety smooth, luxurious, just like butter. And let's go ahead and look at our tomato lentils as they've been simmering for quite a while. As you can see, the starch from the lentils has helped to thicken it up and the tomato juice has given it a great deal of body that will create such a rich and luscious texture. We'll keep those nice and warm before we're ready to plate. And onto our roasted cauliflower. As you can see, the butter mixture and the breadcrumbs and the basil have all together created this beautiful crust around the cauliflower and the texture of it. Nice and tender so that when you put a knife into it, it goes right through with ease. And today, we are pairing our beautiful salmon dish with a Pinot Noir. It's an interesting selection, a perfect crossover for this salmon dish, even though you'd usually expect to hear a white wine paired with fish. But in this case, 
the deep flavors, especially with the tomato lentils, makes this Pinot Noir a perfect pairing. Once again, thank you, Eric and Jenny over at Tilted Bottles in West Hartford, Connecticut for the selection. To plate up this salmon dish, I'm using a shallow bowl. I think it'll be perfect for harnessing our creamy, luscious lentils and showcasing the salmon on top. We'll just go ahead and place a nice pile of the lentils in the center of the plate. I think this way that will allow the lentils and that beautiful tomato flavor to be combined with each component. It matches really well with the basil and the cauliflower crust. And it will make great friends with our salmon as well. The cauliflower I'm actually going to slice right in half. I think one head is a perfect portion for two people. So we'll just slice that down the middle. And you can see how the basil crust has a beautiful vibrant green color on the outside and on the inside you see the familiar cauliflower color. And now the star of our plate, our salmon, can go right next to that. And of course, our final burst of acidity and creaminess with our sauce. Not only does it really nicely contrast all the richness and lusciousness of the lentils, and the buttery cauliflower, but it also helps with the aesthetic of the plate as well. I hope I've inspired your culinary creativity with this salmon recipe, showed you some new techniques and flavor combinations that will get you into the kitchen so that you can prepare meals for your loved ones. Please enjoy this recipe and other recipes. You can find the recipe on www.pursuitofpassion.net where you can also link to my YouTube channel where I share more recipes, tips, and techniques so that you can cook memorable meals for you and your loved ones. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you Nutmeg TV for the opportunity and please be well on your Pursuit of Passion. The Saybrook Fish House in Canton has been serving fresh seafood, chicken, and prime steaks for 40 years. Experience one of our three unique dining room settings, two with fireplaces, or relax in our cozy pub with a craft beer, wine by the glass, or specialty cocktail while enjoying a meal from our new Lighter Fair pub menu. Serving lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday, reservations accepted for parties of 2 to 42, gift cards always available. The Saybrook Fish House, nestled at the crossroads of routes 44, 202, and 179 in Canton. Follow us on Instagram at nutmeg.tv.